Thank you, Eva. Uh, can I premise something before starting the, the question? Yeah, because we are at the, the last presentation uh, before the coffee break. Probably you are still tired or looking for someone else that. Uh, so please be short, okay. have a short talk and so on. But I want to raise your attention because without. Uh, uh, of course, neglecting the uh, presentation done by, before my presentation, we are talking now of the most uh, about the most important resource in our life, and I, it can be easily demonstrated. So uh, you can stay one day without mobile phone, yeah, without take, driving a car or public transportation, probably also without energy at all no washing machine, no heating and so on. But you cannot stay one day in your life without water. And we had also a demonstration today. Karen, you did an amazing presentation, 15 minutes talking about the relevance of energy and raw material and so on. But in 15 minutes, you need a glass of water. <laughs> so this is the premise. And this is the question I have for you. We're talking about renewable groundwater resources. So in Europe, what is the percentage of a groundwater renewable resource that we are consuming? <laughs> is it 1% in your opinion? Who was? Is it 33%? Someone? 75%? Most? 100% renewable rate. Okay, so I have to give the, the answer now. Yes. Yeah, so it was a very challenging question because the real answer is that 1%, yeah? It's a surprise, yeah, a surprise. And this is the reason of my presentation. We have to learn about more about groundwater. Yeah, this is the first slide. And, this is a very relevant uh, topic, and this have been, has been recognized by the United Nations because this year, the, 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 the World Day of Water has been dedicated for the first time to groundwater. <laughs> and this is the report that uh, UNESCO uh, realized this year. So groundwater making the invisible visible. And you know, we need to make this invisible resource visible from the ground to the citizen because it's a very strong resource that we have at the moment. Probably you know that groundwater is the main freshwater resource on the planet and the renewable rate is a very large amount and the current uses correspond to 1% of the renewable, uh, renewable resources at the European level. Of course, the 99% is not still available, or whatever, and uh, all, uh, for the whole season or whole year, and, and some of them are um, including pollution, uh, natural pollution, and uh, human pollution, of course. But in general, as a high quality, as far as guarantees uh, different uses and environmental needs are supplied by, by groundwater too. So we don't have to rise so much our percentage of consumption over the rate rate because of, we, we have a, under the risk of unbalance. So the 75% of the citizens of the European uh, Union are supplied to by groundwater, respect to surface water. So it's a very relevant resource and there will be a groundwater summit at the end of the year in Paris to establish how much groundwater can be important with respect to the surface water supply and availability. Uh, as mentioned before by Karen, water is also a, a common, uh, we, we're talking about uh, sustainable development goals. Water is a common background for several of these goals. Uh, most of them require directly and directly, directly a sustainable approach to water resource. So I'm an integrated uh, approach. <laughs> How to reach the SDG in 2030 is based on sub goals to be evaluated by the series of indicators. There's a lot of literature about it. So it's not only a declaration. We want to uh, obtain to achieve the uh, sustainable uh, development goals. There's a lot of work uh, under, the, under the country, under the sea. 
uh, we need to work on indicator, we need to know, uh, work on accelerator. We are in, in the middle of the mandate to arrive to the sustainable development goals. In the middle, there is a revision of these goals. Of course, everyone knows that it's impossible to achieve for 2030, but we have to do the best we can to be closer to this very, very ambitious uh, aim. So accelerators are being indicated by, by the United Nations. And the European pivot is a green deal. The green deal, of course, is inspired to the sustainable development goals. Several actions of the Green Deal are related to water resource use and protection. The farm to fork strategy, zero pollution, of course, the zero pollution action plan, the climate neutrality, and also the transformation of agricultural, of agricultural rural areas, and, and so on. These are only some examples of the action that the European Commission is promoting in uh, during this year related to water in general. But when we talk about water, we talk also about energy, we talk about food, we talk about ecosystems. So this, this is the nexus that has been launched recently after the previous nexus there, which didn't include the ecosystem. Now we have a new nexus that includes also the environmental issue. So that the achievement of the goals is based on, on, the, on the nexus, which required to link the strategy based on separated cycles and to develop an integrated management and governance to deal with a strong interconnection degree among the four nexus centers. The main pressure of the nexus of the nexus are climate and global changes, demographic pressure, economic condition, political instability, forced migration. They see they are uh, that they are very relevant issue that we are facing all, uh, all the day. This pressure are creating strains with impacts on natural resources, biodiversity, ecosystem, and intermittent and unbalance in the economy and the well being of humans and of the planet, of course. So, the nexus, which includes water, is a basis for a common basis, including energy, food, and, and ecosystem, to reach some of the achievement of the sustainable development goals. What is the role of water and the water in this, in this context? Water is the first target of climate change. And if you look at this, uh, this graph, you can see that water is uh, central, supposed to be central with respect to the human settlement, the sanitation, and the uh, ecosystem energy and the power. And with the current energy and food crisis, energy, of course, but also the food crisis is still uh, at our door, and the water would be the next one. So water, we expect that water costs rise uh, very, very quick in the next month or year, it's an escapation. Because of course, uh, taking water at your home requires energy. And this is a competing use uh, also between the energy consumption. So the public water is under risk. If you talk with some of the water supplier or the water agents and so on, they are taking care of their accounts also. Not only your family, not only the food production, uh, not only the, the big industries, but also the water is under the risk of rising things. So it can be a critical, uh, a critical issue, the water, to go in a negative way because of the energy and food Crisis. If we go after, uh, if water is included in this crisis, it can be some very negative effect. But otherwise, water has also a strong resilience to climate change. Groundwater has a strong resilience to climate change. Of course, it's not inaccessible, it's affected by climate change, but it's a very strong resource that can help to change, to, 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 to invert the direction. And if you are, uh, you believe that the four elements are included in a nexus, we can use water and the water to help the other part of the nexus, which are now in crisis. So there is a positive, possible potential message with respect to the negative one that we expect at the short term. So the, that the natural resilience of the water can help to face a balance in the whole uh, nexus. And of course, as you can see, the nexus is really clearly included in the, in the, this framework. 
Uh, but what we also expect to do the climate change is some uh, change in water availability. Uh, there is a risk in future scenario and some part of the world can be very uh, strongly affected by water shortage. And the Mediterranean area and the Europe in general are one of the most uh, area that can be affected by this uh, scenario. So we expect in the Mediterranean area and in general in Europe uh, a very fast degrees of uh, water resources, including surface water. So that the relevance of groundwater is becoming more and more important because groundwater, of course, it is affected also by the climate change, but with uh, longer uh, effect. So we can use this as a compensation at the moment. We can use groundwater as a compensation at the moment, giving us the time to change some of our habits, our uh, expectation for the future. So the surface water crisis is uh, in front of you, uh, anyone knows, but groundwater can help us to mitigate and to have some time for giving some answer to this crisis. Of course, the water scarcity depends on local conditions, seasonal change, and the temperature increase is not only lowering the aquifer of the channel, is increasing abstraction, water extraction, and so also as a possible cause shortage in water, which impact on an ecosystem. So it is a real con interconnected uh, nexus. And also indirect, indirect impact as the other, the, the direct one, also ecosystem service and, and so on. Some example of the, of the problems that we are facing due to the climate change, the global change, so that the, including the answer that we are uh, doing to this, to this emergency. Shortage in precipitation are uh, expected all in most parts of the world. And another time, Mediterranean in Europe and southern Europe can expect it, but also not in Europe, are uh, expected to have a very strong shortage in the precipitation. <laughs> And the increase of water consumption. So we are still increasing water consumption 1% uh, every year, which seems to be not so high, but it's also a relevant increase all around the world. And uh, the occurrence of extreme events, as you, you talked about it uh, before, is that the extreme events occurrence is rising uh, every year, and uh, there are three times respect to the, to the previous uh, four years. Uh, so we expect another uh, additional problems with the surface water management due to the extreme events. This graph seems to be complex, but it's very easy to read, yeah? So we were in a <coughs> limited condition and we are looking for the SDG. We, we, we have lost some very green path we lost forever. We are now in the middle of this, this process and we can move down, going to the orange and red condition without the possibility to go up. Or we can manage this condition right now, looking at 2030, 2100, to see if we can be able to stay in, at least on the yellow path. Or the green path, it seems to me, ambitious as possible. So we need young people. We are, I'm talking about me, we are, we cannot contribute so much. So we can, I cannot tell the, the, uh, the perspective of 2100. So we need young people to do it. And every day we are facing this kind of, of uh, possibility. Geology of course uh, is uh, one of the main drivers, one of the, uh, possibility that we have to improve the, the knowledge and to arrive to some positive results in the whole SDG achievement. Because 14 of these are connected to the nexus and most of them are connected to the water cycle. How to do it? Uh, research, yes, research. And I'm still uh, active in scientific research, producing new methodology, new data, so we need also new data. Scenarios, simulation, practical application, solution. We are, I'm involved in a project that's still closed in a few months uh, under the Prima action of the European Union, including Mediterranean uh, country. It's the Karma project on the cost of sorts in the Mediterranean area. And the new one will start in uh, next month in uh, under the Horizon uh, Europe uh, program is an IMPA project related to the 
climate change scenario and how to use you know water to uh, help us to, to to improve our resilience to climate change. Finally, uh, some key uh, keywords. Uh, we have the possibility to, to use the steward to improve the nexus impact, adaptation, of course, governance. I'm absolutely convinced that the down to top approach can be very uh, positive in results. Down to top approach uh, has been followed uh, by, by rural communities. And now it's time to adopt also at the citizen in the cities and at the, at the government level. As, as mentioned before, we need the citizen. We need that the citizen know, know the situation and they can be uh, active, active at all of this uh, new phase. The resilience, of course, we have a, uh, the resilience of the, of the nexus is not so high. Water, due to the river, water is the most powerful of the four elements into the system. So we, if we know the water availability, quality, and uh, possibility to, to use this water, we can help the entire nexus to be equilibrated with respect to the pressure that we have at the moment. The mitigation, of course, the nexus application is a multi-component analysis of a system uh, inter interdependent, but to be obtained by shared common decision. Communication, and we are here also for this reason. So communication is one of the most important things, more important probably than knowledge, than science. Communication with, uh, with uh, uh, our colleagues, communication uh, out of the scientific process uh, with professional people, uh, communication with the citizens, stakeholders, and of course, uh, government and decision making. And this is one of, uh, of the classical uh, graph that can show you how the decision maker and in this case the water professional runners and the local water stakeholders of the general public has to be interconnected. So the three circles has to be closer and closer every day to reach more awareness about the uh, resource that we still have on the on the on the globe and uh, the way that we can use it then for giving us some possibility to have a better future. Thank you very much for your attention.